Police are searching for an armed man who forced his way into the apartment of two Kennesaw State students, robbed them, and then fired several shots before driving away. Channel 2's Ross Cabot with us live on George Busby Parkway. The main thing, I wasn't even supposed to really be there because the dorms, where I was on in-campus dorms. This was like the cheapest dorms you could live in. And they kick out everyone from them dorms. Like everyone who wasn't fresh when they kicked them out. So for like a year, I was just bouncing around from like couch to couch, giving people like 150, 200 a month just to like live in their French room or something. And I ended up living with one guy and his his daughter. I always used to work in the camp, um the dish room together. There's one guy from Detroit, one white guy from um they you know New York Italians and <laughs> this play and the guy from Detroit, his his six year old daughter, it's like a two bedroom, like a pot. Also, this was in the school dorms. No, this is all the school dorms. Okay. And he he used to live like work in the military or like he was at some point and um in the dish room as well. So like this all us we used to smoke at the time and then just, you know, be chilling and relaxing. So he has said this weird too, but <laughs> we already know, like, we already, te- like, I already spoke to him before, like, because there was some incident where he <laughs> was trying to sell people stuff from out the power. So I already tell him, like, like, you know, you can't do that again, right? Say, so, like, uh, so, he's not like, you're a crock <laughs> No, but, how, okay, so you, because I know you was just, like, paying to stay. I thought you was actually staying. Had like a room and everything, and they no. Was... As far as living on the like little bed in the front, like little couch or like yeah. my living in the front room, bro. Wow, wow. Like yeah, bro. And then so, and these people. No, because you was like how you was telling me the first time. I didn't know. I was when you were saying, yeah, I keep on telling them, dude that I thought that was y'all's part or whatever. See that now I know, and he might have looked at like, but you won't even really did it. Yeah, da, da, da. I put my I put my name on the lease. Just yeah. because I didn't want to even have no say like that, so they could mm. put me out, like mm. because I wasn't paying them much. So it was my name and Lisa and the white boy from New York. Mm. So already, like I saying, you know, like don't be stupid. Like mm-hmm. we live here. Like whatever you want to do, they like, do it outside or like go drive the people. So you probably just say something that made me like, yeah, yeah, you know. And we still buckets with that, before, like after that. So. He still had people, like, I think the next day, like, this like 10 in the morning, they'd gone on downstairs to go, because he locked his keys inside his car. He had a Durango and a BMW. So, he had two cars. Yeah. Right. Wow. So I think he must have was leasing one of them. I don't know. Very so he, simple. Yeah. So he locked his keys inside one. So I helped him get it out. Like, like he pried the, the door open a little bit and, like, get some piece of hanging and just push down the, the unlock button to get it out. So I go on back upstairs, right? All oh, this 10 in the morning now, like, like just bright, sunny day, like everything about to be a great day. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like so I see him walk back upstairs. They're like, one boy, Justin's boy eyes was yellow. Like, wow. Like, and he looked like, like probably with five, 10, six foot or something like that. And you could just see or something off with him. Mm-hmm. So how the apartment was situated, like you walk in his room immediately to the left. This is a French room area. Just the hallway, and then it's the kitchen, it's the bathroom leading to the hallway, mm-hmm. and his room connected to the bathroom. So I was in the bathroom, and then the mm-hmm. other roommate room on the next side of the kitchen. So I in the bathroom, and I get here like he serving him or he weighing something up for him. He say, you know, let me see it like this and that. And I know something off because this ain't quiet. this ain't really like no ghetto like nothing like that. Like people just buy what they want get and then leave. So. He said, let me see it, let me see it. And as soon as he said it, yeah, like the gun cock. And he said, like, get on the ground. And this boy, like, from the military now, walking, like, this big, this big <laughs> man. You know, I say, like, please don't shake, please don't kill me. Like, just, just begging for his life. Like, please. And he's just saying, like. Oh, okay, so he knew this dude before? I, these people who I just know for a couple months, like, yes. Not talking about he knew the dude he, he was serving. He never meet him in his life. My I got a story dude, after, after, after you tell that about. Anyway, I yeah, really want to make this into a movie. I was trying to produce this for a little while. I have a script written up for this and everything. So yeah. I can still like No, because we were supposed to do a skit about that. And when you was playing the man, well, you was gonna play you. Mm. So basically, I just like, you know, F like explain. I just someone curse on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mind saying, like, wow. So all I thinking is I just try to creep down the hallway, like 
I want a knife out the kitchen and hugged the hallway. Then we so what around. did it make you think, wait, let me just stay in the bathroom? I know he was going to come in the bathroom. Mm. He probably, yeah. He used to clear out the whole house. He would kill all us in there, probably. He came in there with no mask on. And then he looked like he was a little high already. Mm-hmm. So I said, let me just see if I could get a knife. Let me walk this corner. I could just, I could jerk him to pieces. <laughs> and then when he came around the corner, like he already had the gun drawn me like this. So all yeah, I got to yeah. do is just, like, even my hand, drop, drop it down. So he put all this in the front room, put us on the ground, like, and he looking through the place and I remember he just begging, saying, like, man, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Like, you just, I have a daughter. And then the robber talking to him, saying, like, listen, I didn't have a dad. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take you from your daughter. So, in my mind, saying, like, why, why are you I said, in my mind, like, like you saying, boy, F you and your dad, and F you and your daughter, bro. Like, you have us, like, on the ground. Right. You know what I'm saying? Bro, so we just on the ground, and he's saying, like, where the money is, where the money is. So, I just... Like saying, like, you know, one of you. But this dude bro, was probably there before, bro. Or I guess he probably just scoping the place out. Yeah. So now he only get like a little bit of weed my roommate had, and like I had ten dollars my wallet, and he take a PS, a PS two, or like an Xbox three sixty, and like one JBL speaker. So he's saying like, where I know it, some, I know it's some mess. And my roommate say, uh, I, I get more money in my car, so I just like. <laughs> Like, nah. Wait, what, what I just saying, what happened? Like, <laughs> I think in my mind, <laughs> like, what happened? Like, so he he take us out the place. He walking us down. I like. So ain't no one else seeing this way. Have y'all tie up? We in the all this happening in the apartment. Uh, nobody talking about when he took y'all downstairs to the car. We walk. We walking on the single file, and he walking up behind us. Like, you know, one tie up or nothing like that. And he just walking out. We going to the back of the. He going to the BMW, right? So mm-hmm. it's in the parking lot, right? And so he walk in front of us now. My roommate's standing in the trunk. So he walk in front of us now. My roommate between me and him. So I trying to signal them to say like, like jump him. That's your Russian man. Right. Saying, like what? <laughs> and he ain't do nothing. <laughs> so I just I just call him going past him. And then as soon as I want to strike him, he say. Like, what are you doing? Like, and just, <laughs> so just to, just to signal the boy, to turn around. So as soon as the boy is turning around, like his head, like meet my fist, and I, I strike him, he just fall on the ground, and the gun fall onto the side, onto the curb. So just right in front of my roommate again now. Uh, mm-hmm. And then me and the, the robber, like, we just, like, going for the gun. They just jump for it, and he get it before me. So I just, like, gripping him, holding him, like, just striking him, striking him. And right. uh, we on the side of the car, like the BMW, like, he, like, Decided like leaning on it. I just strike, and he had the gun. That so he trying to to hit one shot at me, like pointing my face, and I strike him, and then the gun going like in there. So the first shot missed, Oy. and then he trying to get up. Did listen to they hear the story? So now he trying to get up <laughs> off the ground, like to draw down on me to shoot me on the ground. So I just holding his his, his collar, so I get his sleeve, so I get up with him, and then he's still like trying to like shake me off and shoot, and he shake me off him, and then he shoot again. So I just on the ground. Rolling around, rolling around, like all my knees for getting cut up. Like I could put the link on the same video. Like police are searching for an armed man who forced his way into the apartment of two Kennesaw State students, robbed them, and then fired several shots before driving away. Channel 2's Ross Cabot with us live on George Busby Parkway near the KSU campus with the unusual item the suspect was wearing, Ross. Well, the victims told me the suspect appeared to have on an ankle monitor that you would get if you are on some sort of house arrest, which is very weird. It happened just before 11 o'clock in this complex just off George Busby Parkway near the Kennesaw State University campus. That suspect, as he was fleeing, yelled at the victims that he may come back for him, which is why those students did not want their identities revealed. I heard the gun cough and... He said, it's a robbery, get down. This victim, too scared to show his face, told me the armed robber forced his roommate back into their apartment then forced them both to lay down at gunpoint. He did not wear a mask. At that point, you don't know what he could, is capable of because he isn't scared to show his face. The robber stole a couple of game consoles from the apartment, a bit of cash, then forced both students back out into the parking lot. The KSU sophomore told me he worried the gunman would force them to drive out of the apartment complex, so he jumped them. Tussle for that, but he let off a few shots in the air, and I ran back up and tried, you know, call the police. For the most part, it's families and KSU students. 
Neighbors say this aging complex just off the KSU campus has until recently been a peaceful mix of folks, but lately there's been an uptick in trouble, including more gunshots heard just last night. It's a really nice neighborhood. Half the people leave their cars unlocked around here. You know, we all know each other, so it's like, it is a bit of a shock. There's always cops through here for one thing or another. He could have killed us multiple times, you know. So the victim who stared at a gun and fought his attacker was moving out of the greenhouse complex, heading back to campus. There's a heavy police presence out there, so I was so surprised. He even tried that in broad daylight like this. A very strange uh, case here. Detectives say they're still working it. The suspect fled down here on George Busby Parkway in a light blue Toyota. The victim told me that he was living on campus at KSU, but was kicked out when his dorms were converted to freshman dorms. He was heading right back over there, hoping he can get a room back on campus once again. We are live near Kennesaw, Ross Cavett, Channel 2 Action News. We had a news clip and, and pictures and everything. Like, yeah, we got oh, yeah, we cut that. Yeah. Big yeah. Story. So, so, yeah. so, all this, and they're just spinning right. I ain't staying still for like a second, so you don't get any clean. So, he shoot again. Like, there's three shots, and I miss again. So, I just run upstairs, and like, he run this car, and they going off, and they call the police. I called the police. They came upstairs, right? They draw it on me. They saying like, you know, I black. So yeah, they, yeah, could, yeah. they could think, you know, yeah. I'm doing something at first. And then we go on our says they're doing their report or whatever. Bro, my roommate, you don't even know. You see where he was this whole time? He run out of our complex across the street to the next apartment complex, bro. To he who? Saw, no one? <laughs> he just saw me with the police. He's saying like, hey, bro, you got shot? He's like, <laughs> so I just there, like just the police or the army just bondaged me up or whatever. Like they just getting a statement, like and I just angry, just cursing and saying, you know what happened, this and that, and like all that happened, mm. and still now mm. going back to the campus trying to, I still going the same day, turning my homework assignments, like bleeding, bro. Like I walk wow. around the campus bleeding, turn like going to classes, like tell them what happened, and like people respecting that. Even my jaw, I didn't even tell them, but they had, but it like through some people must see, like they give me a raise because of that. <laughs> wow. uh -huh. So all that happened, right? And you was asking, like, was that a part? Like, but hey, that was a rage thing. Like, I hey, I wanted, I wanted to kill, I wanted to kill him. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to cut him down, and he ain't no one would have blamed me, like, because self defense. Yeah, ain't no one would have blamed me, and then I still already like I just angry on this situation. I can't even really sleep properly. People in and out the place, like people, just you in America, bro. Like America, I understand, in, in, in the South, bro. Like this, they still they racist, bro. like yeah. they still really have ignorant mindsets. Bro. So I, I deal with all of this, and still ain't really where I want to be at in life. Bro. Still, you really, still trying to heal from your trauma, and mother person, and still these days just keep on coming and coming and compounding. Bro. So it is be like, bro. If I die, die, but I could kill him. Boy. And mm -hmm. he ain't no one could blame me. Boy. Right. So, and I, I ain't no gangster, bro. I ain't no someone who grew up in no gang or nothing like that or mm -hmm. in no quote unquote bad area. This just, it's just me as a person. And this something with, that's a fight or flight instinct with in everybody. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I keep on saying, like, throughout this interview, it ain't about saying, where would oh, background you from? It ain't about that because people have issues. Boy. People yeah, have yeah. serious, people have serious issues in life. Did the person ever got caught? No, you know they never get caught. Like, if I'm Mexican police officer, um, expect to do the statement and like he said, I can call you the next day. They ain't never called me. So mm. then I trying to go on campus now to see where I could live now. The campus they giving me a hard time because I had to see some hundred dollar bill but it didn't get paid off. So and I had some money to pay. It, you know, they say, listen, you all kick me, kick us out. Kick us out for nothing, really. Mm -hmm. And then you want me to do what? I take the money, I go on, take a trip to Miami, but it's <laughs> one of my cousins, bro, like just to, right. to just to be with them for a little bit and, and just talk. Bro. And so did you, so what your, did you finish at Kennesaw? Yeah, I, I stayed there like two more years after that and then get my degree and everything. And I finished what I went over there for. And if I really wanted to, I could I could stay. I had my OBT. I had everything like um my I still have my card like the um, yeah, I still have mine too. Yeah, yeah. The, the work um, access so, card, but still, way I didn't even talk about the suicidal thoughts and suicide. Okay, so let's get let's get in there because all these things because uh -huh. 